Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 28 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. Now, today we're doing version 2.1, another update of Irwin Animal Clinic in Osceola, Georgia, which has been my vet for years. So the way that I organize a digital marketing strategy has evolved here in my digital marketing lab to the current six steps that you see on the screen, which we're gonna walk through an example of each, but keep in mind, this is an unresearched example. So the first step being research, the point of the research on my end is to compile a SWOT chart, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats specific to an individual business. And the idea behind that SWOT chart, and it's going to be a living document that you're gonna iterate over time, but the point of it is to educate the decision-making of the owner operator for each of the different businesses that I work with. Now, the first decision that it is built to educate is the goal of the strategy. That's followed up by the customer point of view, and it is singular. You wanna be everything to that one person, so to speak. And then the fourth part is the pressing problem that you're able to solve. When I'm compiling the SWOT chart, here's some of the questions, here's some of the reports. It's just a sampling, there's others, and it's always gonna be specific to the unique context of any specific business and how it's structured and its stakeholders and you know, so forth. So here's an example though, just to give you an idea, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This is a simple unresearched one, but it, it'll kind of give you an idea of where we're coming from. Like for instance, in this instance, the digital, they don't have a website. There is no digital at the present. So that's, you know, that's the insight, so to speak, from kind of looking at some of the stuff and ask, asking some of the questions from the prior slide. So the goal for Irwin Animal Clinic, in my mind, unresearched, is to cease the digital sharecropping. They don't have their own website, their own digital land. They're renting Facebook's digital land with the Facebook brand page. And so I would continue the brand page. I mean, definitely that's a brand asset, but you want to use it as kind of a way station, so to speak, or a connector to the actual website where they actually own it. And so the second part would be begin organizing Irwin Animal Clinic's own direct audience of pet people. So rather than renting access to third party audiences by running an ad in the local newspaper or putting up a billboard or sending you some junk mail or whatever, they would actually have a direct audience that they would be building through their website and through their email list. The customer point of view are animal caregivers living within 30 miles or 50 miles, just depends, of the brick and mortar clinic, which is in Osceola, Georgia. Now, the pressing problem is specifically convenient quality, specifically convenient quality animal care. So there's quality animal care. I've been using Irwin Animal Clinic for years. However, as far as convenient, not so much. Though they don't let you use your phone at all in the booking or checkout process, and that would occur through the website, right? So that's the pressing problem that we're addressing by attacking that goal that we set, which was cease the digital sharecropping as well as start organizing and building their direct audience. And all of that flows through the website itself and part of the website is both the store and another part is the media archive you can think of them as departments or whatever but in my mind the website the home page of the website is the front door digitally for the business so digital office the website Here's a demo that I put together. If you go to jasonomsllc.com forward slash example dash 28, you, it's a working demo and I'm actually working on upgrading it some and just continuing to iterate all the components of the different examples that I'm doing so that just to continue to add value to each part as a bunch of repetition happens and I learn different stuff, right? Here is the homepage screenshot. If you scroll down, you can see that you can log in and it would actually show your account there, or you could, if you don't have an account yet, all it takes is an email address 
in order to go ahead and get registered. And then they could, you know, add additional information later if they needed something shipped to them or whatever. I always build out websites from the homepage. I use Genesis Child Theme. That's what I've kind of refined my process to is I use Genesis Child Theme Essence Pro, which was designed by Rafal Tamal. I use it because it makes it real easy for me to take care of the homepage and build out from there. And so you can kind of mix and match and so forth and pull off a bunch of different specific looks based off of what you're looking to accomplish on that homepage. And then the other part is the navigation menus. So I like to put those top and bottom for convenience. And so once you add them, you have to make sure that those pages are actually populated and ready to go. And once you do homepage and any pages that are linked to from it, so to speak, then you have a website. And you can add as many pages after that as you want. As far as the store, it's the shopping cart, right? So you anywhere on the website in the store, it doesn't matter. They're going to be able to buy and check out and do it securely, and it'll all go into their account, which they're able to you know access on the homepage and you know so forth. And if they here's just a quick screenshot of the card, and you, know, you could go beyond that as well. And there's a lot of really the world is their oyster the key is just getting it initially set up so that it is an option for people to start transitioning any part of it that they want to of the transaction process away from the brick and mortar in real life and actually move it you know, to the digital on their phone or you know whatever now the media archive includes video audio and written images in my mind you want all of them archived in your website now, the audience is the point of all the media, right? So you're going to create a direct audience. I approach that from three different steps, media plan, media creation process, and then media distribution strategy. So a couple of quick tips, I guess, that I'm, and I'm still learning because it's just, it really, the biggest thing for me that I've learned is that it's repetition. The more times that you actually do it, the better you get at it, the more you learn about it. It just, there's, there's so many different positives to it, especially when you're trying to teach what you're learning as well, like pass that along. The other thing that I've learned is you take a deep breath and be yourself. And I, I learned that more going door to door back in the day for years and years but it, it just be yourself that's how you're going to let people actually relate to you don't try and be what you think they want you to be be yourself and let them relate to you and then share every episode that's the lesson focus on your customer and the reason that i've mentioned that is because when you're creating media you want to keep your customer in mind, an empowered consumer, you want to keep their thoughts and needs and desires in mind when you're planning. So part of that is give them all three versions of the media every time you create an episode so that they get to decide how they want to consume it each time that they decide to consume an episode. Now, the media plan is 3.1. In this case, the audience point of view, I just define it very simply, at least unresearched to begin with, as animal caregivers i don't really care about geography as far as for the media they can buy stuff through the if they want to start offering some kind of services or whatever there's so many different possibilities so they don't want to restrict it to just people animal caregivers within 40 miles of the location that that's drastically reducing the brand's potential beginning with audience point of view animal caregivers the show strategy in my mind unresearched to begin with would be a once a weekly live 30 minute video q a show with dr ashley hill answering questions for animal caregivers that have posed these questions right and the media creation process tentatively once again unresearched the way that i would recommend is that they you want the in-house capability. You want to not just add media by bringing in a media company or advertising company or whatever. You don't just want that. You, you're going to probably want to use outside, but you want to add the capacity in-house. And that starts with the, the person that's running the show, the actual operator for the business. The way that I, in this instance, it would be Dr. Ashley Hill, right? So not that she's going to do all the pieces, but she's got to be the executive producer for this show because it is her brand. Even if she's not the person on camera, she would still need to be the message, the driving message behind the answers that are coming. Just like when I walk in with my dogs, maybe I don't see her, but she's the driving force behind 
the you know the processes and how it plays out and how people treat my animals and treat me and you know so forth so exact same thing applies here but they have an office manager I, I think it's an office manager i'm not sure what the exact title is although i've been a customer forever i just know when i walk in there's a as soon as you walk in the door to the right there is a desk there and there's a lady that with a computer and you can that's where you pay and you know so forth and a lot of times there's a big bunch up at the door and you got animals everywhere and so forth so in my mind the office manager tentatively on research could prepare the set for the live show and you know once you've done it once and then you do it again and so it's just it's going to be really easy to pull off week in and week out but you have to do it a couple of times before it becomes simple. But the point is you need a camera with a microphone attached that can record and that can also stream live Dr. Hill's answers to the different questions. So someone needs to pose them. It could just start out where you know the, the office manager or the right hand vet just read them you know, off camera and let the let dr hill be on camera and she listens and then she answers and then they move to the next one or whatever but the thinking behind it in my mind is that you're building an archive of acumen or as far as to build authority for dr hill and her staff and the Irwin animal clinic brand as a whole and it you know people are going to be asking similar questions over time so you may need to update some answers over time true but it's not like everything's just going to completely drain, change drastically all the time. So you know, a lot of that is going to be very evergreen that you know, people in the 10 years from now are still going to be asking similar questions when they're caring for you know, this type of animal or this, you know, whatever. So office manager, prepare the set, publish a copy of the video to the site once it's, you know, the live Q&A is over, distribute a copy of the video to the different other places on the internet where they want to, you upload it natively as far as a copy of it and then promote the video plus the upcoming q a that may not all be through directly the office manager maybe they bring in they could outsource some of it there's so many different possibilities and then as far as the dr hills i just call her the <laughs> dr hills right hand vet um i don't know her name although she's the one that normally you know takes care of me when i come in with the animals in my mind she would be perfect to as she's interacting and she has people that are helping her so she could even have one of them actually physically do it for her. but you know she's just lining up three to five questions for every show would be the idea so and she could just put if she's jotting them down or having one of the people working with her you know that's jotting them down on a, a note card or whatever as they go through she'll over time it's not going to be hard to come up with a bunch of different questions that people have asked that you know dr hill can then turn into media that will grow the brand iterate your creation process example being you just you got to start somewhere and once it's done it needs to output a piece of media an episode ideally in the three different forms in this instance you know, a general process could be the right hand vet plans the questions for each episode the office manager prepares for the live video set lighting in the video camera dr hill steps on to set and does the live q a with the office manager or right hand vet you know or both kind of supporting her one running the camera and you know one maybe ask answering questions in live chat if they're live streaming into facebook and so forth, or you and or youtube etc and then the office manager is the one that publishes the video a copy of it to the website and then the office manager distributes the video etc cetera, etc cetera. so an example deliverables list is you have the 30 minute live stream right each of the different episodes and you're going to if you're streaming it to facebook or to youtube or to both or other places you're going to be able to get a copy of the live stream and so from there, you can take the audio version over to anchor.fm for the podcast version, and it'll push it to like 10 or 11 different podcasting platforms automatically. And then the image, you could have either the office manager or the right hand bet come up with an image with a pull quote from that Q&A episode, maybe each of the different questions with the, you know, you have an image, a screenshot or an image of whatever, and you put the, you have somebody put the um, pull quote on there. And then that you can use that on Twitter and you can use that on Instagram. 
Graham, I think, and you know, so forth. Short stories. I really like these currently as far as uh, they're like four images together that tell a quick story that are supported with each image has you know a couple sentences, three sentences, whatever. The media distribution, the goal of it, and it's a high bar, but the goal is to give people what they want, where they want it, and then you know, how they want it every time they want it. Now, the way that I approach it and would recommend with Irwin Animal Clinic on research is the Wistia. I would use Wistia as far as to embed everything on their website. I'd upload organically to the Facebook brand page that they already have. I'd add a YouTube channel. I also get an audio version going to anchor.fm and start the podcast version for them immediately. And then the irwinanimalclinic.com forward slash blog would be, well, you'd archive everything. All the audio, video, and written would all be archived there in my mind. So the prospect is the fourth step. And I look at the digital offer and the customer attention life cycle here. So as far as the digital offer, I use the solution and access, value and education, as opposed to the four P's of marketing that I was taught at Valdosta State University, where I got my marketing degree with honors and back in 2010. Now, the solution that I, I learned to save, solution, access, value, education, from Greg Ciotti on the um, Help Scout blog a few years back. So in this instance, the solution is a digitally convenient brick and mortar experience. First and foremost, just by involving this with the, the lowest of the low hanging fruit, you're going to be able to make it much more convenient and less time investment for people to interact with Irwin Animal Clinic. And by doing that, it's going to make Irwin Animal Clinic so much more attractive to the people in the area. The access brick and mortar plus the IAC homepage is where I would start. And that would automatically add the smartphone to everyone, every customer's arsenal, which would be a big jump as far as digital activity on behalf of Irwin Animal Clinic, the brand. Now the value is happy, healthy animals, but it really boils down to the selfish for the caregiver of the animal, which is just a minimal number of wasted minutes. The, how many minutes can I say I don't have to sit out in the, um, the wait area and then, you know, go and pay afterwards for another five minutes waiting in line or 10 or 20, you know what I mean? So the education, kind of the, the messaging philosophy in my mind, and this is on research, but I would want to paint the picture for animal owners of how much the clinic staff adores animals, because I know they do, because I see it all the time when I take my animals in there. As far as the customer attention life cycle, I lay it out as far as everybody starts as a stranger. They don't know Irwin Animal Clinic. Irwin Animal Clinic has no clue about them. At some point, Irwin Animal Clinic is going to get on the a animal person's radar and then if they're attracted to the brand then with the digital side they don't have to be local to actually purchase stuff from the brand to support the brand monetarily right so especially in you know 2019 2025 and beyond but at some point they're going to qualify themselves as an animal person that is that relates to this brand the natural the honest brand of you know dr ashley hill right and so that's when they're in the audience and then once they're identified as an active pet caregiver then now they're a qualified prospect and then when they buy you know now they're a customer and for each of the different phases you're going to want to be prepared for them to pay attention to different questions in different issues or worries or whatever, right? Because when they're a stranger, they're, the first thing is, is this reputable? Is there, can I trust it? You know, is, is it an authority, et cetera, et cetera. But then beyond, and you get more out of that. It, the more open lines of communication, the better. And then if you're helpful, that helps build goodwill as well. And if you remember, which is where segmenting your customer POVs come from, you want to remember when they tell you what they like and don't like, you want to remember that. You do that with tags, et cetera, segmenting the points of view. And you, do, I do that with drift.com, which I use for live chat and email. The whole point of getting to know them is to be able to qualify prospects 
so that you're not just trying to talk a bunch of people into anything. You're actually giving people an opportunity in the context to purchase something that they actually want. So, and that comes from being able to make contextual offers. Now, the customer conversation, I would play it out over live chat and email, as well as the phone, which they already do at Irwin Animal Clinic. And I'd add video meetings as well, because if you're using drift.com, which I do for email and live chat, it makes it really simple to allow people to book meetings through the live chat and email system, and then remind them about them and add them to your Google Calendar automatically and so forth. So the customer feedback loop, the thought process behind it is that you email each customer asking on a scale of one to 10, how likely are they to share? Well, it should be Irwin Animal Clinic there. So, but the brand, right? And so it applied with South Georgia Loop Center as well. But in this instance, it would be Irwin Animal Clinic. And I use gatherapp.com to do that. You take the email address over, you drop it into gatherapp and they shoot them an email and then the people that reply one to eight are added to what I refer to as a customer service queue and then nine and ten replies are thanked and then invited to share their thoughts publicly and provided convenient shortcuts as far as links or buttons or whatever to the different profiles. The campaigns is the sixth step and I start with three basic categories for the campaigns. Get attention, keep attention, and administrative. And I'm going to show you an example of each of the three. So as far as the get attention, an example being, and this is unresearched, but the place that just my gut says I'd probably start would be, I want to break the ice locally on the digital side, especially, right? Because now they have a website. Let's let everybody know about it. Let's let everybody understand what it can actually help them do now. Because if they have pets, we're going to be able to save them time as far as taking care of those pets. Because we can ship stuff. And, you know, there's so many different possibilities that they could go with. I would just want, I in the first video is very easy. I tell the origin story of Irwin Animal Clinic and then just start going from there and do them consistently over time would be my goal. So the keep attention, an example would be, I'd start an email conversation and they have a sign up clipboard that you can give their email address. So they do have something, but it's gonna be a lot easier, I believe, to sign more people up if they have media on the website and they have a way to type in their email address and you know quickly become a part of it. But the point of it would be, I'd want to make it easy for customers to carry on their own conversation with Irwin Animal Clinic. And the way that Irwin Animal Clinic stays top of mind in my mind would be having them on this list that they can actually hit reply to if they have a question or whatever. But on the list means that they are sent an update each week about the different questions that they've been answering for people and you're just sharing the information that they've been archiving by doing the 30 minute per week q a sessions so the administrative example would be i'd invest in local citations brightlocal.com local citation building service and data aggregator submissions the point of it is each brand, each business can go to brightlocal.com, pay two to five bucks per service or aggregator, and Bright Local will allow them to upload all of their specific information that's actually right. So their proper address and phone number and their images, their short description, their long description. And what Bright Local will do is rank everything and then they'll show you that, okay, here's all the places you're showing up. Here's where you have stuff that's incorrect. Here's where you're not showing up at all so that we but is you know industry specific or it actually would help you and then you tell them how much you want to invest blah 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 and they go on and take care of it for you if you wanted to do this yourself your diy investment using the managed woocommerce the 39 bucks is the beginner plan their their main plan starts at 250 a month but it it's a great starting point. It's one I'm using. And then 15 bucks is for how much I pay for a domain. The 130 bucks a year for studiopress.com, or not a year, just 130 bucks if you've never bought anything from StudioPress. 
That's for the Genesis child theme. It's called Essence Pro. 100 bucks for Wistia. It did, if you have a bunch of videos, you're going to start paying 25 cents per video per month beyond, I think you get like 10 for 100. And then after that, everything is 25 cents a piece per month. And you're going to want it because of the video hosting and analytics. Your, your own media company, you're going to definitely want that in my mind. Drift.com for the live chat and email, as I mentioned previously. Likewise with gatherup.com, that's the customer feedback loop, 40 bucks a month or so to start. Yoast.com, premium SEO plugin for WordPress, definitely gonna want that. It just helps your site communicate well with search engines. And 300 bucks a year for the wistia.com soapbox. It's a Chrome extension, it's what I'm using to record this. And it just makes it super easy to record, edit, share, and measure presentation videos like this, where I'm using a slide deck to present and I'm talking to the camera. Five bucks per employee or possibly 10 bucks depending on your plan that you choose, but that's for Google's G Suite and that includes the email. So like I'm able to have uh, Jason at jasonobsllc.com because I have G Suite for jasonobsllc.com and 912-381-6318 is my phone. Feel free to, if you have questions, email, text, or you can call, just leave a message. If I don't know your number, I'm not gonna answer. But I definitely always check any messages just in case. And then obviously when it's you know a question, something useful, I'm, I get back as soon as I can. What's next is example 29 on Friday. And that's January 25th of 2019. Hopefully your new year is rolling right along. And if you have questions, hit me up.